Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are actually going to do a bunch of things today uh, because none of them were really quality, qualitative enough to make their own episode out of. But uh, we are starting out here on the launch pad with a resupply for our uh, lunar base, uh, Rosalina Memorial Station, lifting off on a fairly standard uh, DN2BX. Uh, this is the old style resupply pod that has its own orbital insertion um, module, I guess, uh, underneath the supply pod itself that has been I, a little useless, really, and I've been trying to effectively phase it out and also increase the capacity and thus reduce the frequency of these resupplies, because it feels like I have just done lunar resupplies uh, about 20 some odd times uh, recently. So I'm trying to uh, get away from just doing these over and over and over again. I certainly never wanted every other episode to be resupplying Rosalina Memorial Station. There's Booster Sep. They are clear and away, and we'll pass the 100 kilometer mark and ditch the fairings. I'm sure all of you recognize uh, this style of supply pod. I built like a bunch of spares. And I just had this one sitting around, so I was like, well, let's go ahead and burn through the old stock before we start uh, worrying too much about getting some of the new stuff out there. But uh, we will eventually get down more onto the prograde, reduce that relative inclination. I should warn you that I was very, very tired when filming all of this, so all of the silly mistakes that you'll see me make are entirely due to me having not nearly enough sleep. But uh, don't worry, we're going to get to a lot of other things this episode besides my really screwing up this burned orbit. But we'll go ahead and clear out the core, even though that's not something this mission generally requires. Sometimes we'll dish it with a couple hundred meters per second left in it. Uh, fire up the RL-10s to actually make this into an orbit. Uh, 2 million by 141 kilometers. Yeah, not my finest hour. And we'll uh, plot our intercept to the moon and get that dialed in just a little bit. Surely I will screw it all up, but it's only like uh, 2.8 kilometers per second, coming up on 2.3. Um, 3.2 in our RL-10A upper stage, uh, so we will hopefully have uh, enough left in this little guy to assist us on orbital insertion at the moon. Uh, every little bit of fuel that we can bring down to Rosalina Memorial Station, uh, the better. It means uh, the sooner we can get our uh, Mr. Science, Science Hopper, uh, into active service and start biome hunting for science. Um, but we do need more fuel out there. We could take some from our ascent stage, but I worry if there's some kind of emergency or uh, a failure of some kind or if... Uh, the Boris Kraken should strike, and we need to get the crew off the surface immediately. I want that thing to have enough Delta V to leave uh, in a hurry, which means not using it all on the uh, Mr. Science Science Hopper. So there is our uh, lunar injection, and we'll just use RCS to clean this up. And uh, I will spare you some of the boring orbital insertion things, uh, amongst other things, after we have this cleaned up. And let's just uh, jump on over to something entirely different. Namely, uh, out here, Jupiter, where we are rejoining the uh, Saccharos 1. This is our mission to land on the surface of Ganymede and radio some science back. Uh, it is making its second uh, adjustment. This is a uh, correction to its orbit to put it on a path where, well, really later it has to do an, or uh, an inclination change, I think. And uh, then it's going to... Uh, slide itself into a gravity assist off of Ganymede, and uh, that will help lower its orbit a whole bunch, kind of reducing our required delta V uh, for orbital insertion later. Of course, I executed the burn way too soon, so we'll just wait for uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock to give us that one minute warning before uh, cleaning up the burn ourselves. And there it is. Engine shut down. We'll uh, touch up that last couple of tenths of a meter per second on RCS, take a look at the map, and holy crap, I don't have to make another adjustment. So we've got our inclination change, one more correction, and then flyby. Anyway, we're going to switch over to Mars. All right, And because we've been meaning to do this for a while, 
uh, Engineer Nina, well, EVA, and uh, we're going to do a very, very slight part count reduction. Uh, inventory, equip your drill, please. Thank you. And uh, just some general cleaning up, I think. Maybe. Uh, so yeah, here's the plan, I guess, was to uh, move this solar panel and all of these solar panels to this central hub. But I wonder if that's going to interfere with our ability to dock things. And if maybe I really should, well, I was going to move that panel up there also just for uniformity's sake, although I think it's, it is much bigger because it is scaled up. And we do have this little panel that we scavenged from uh, our lander. Hmm. Maybe I should just move two panels down here, have them arcing off in this direction. Let's start with that. Although it is going to take uh, considerably longer. Okay, so you were behaving a little sluggishly. I was wondering if you had some things in your inventory I did not know about. And also, while we're here, actually, we can... Well, let me double check something. All of these should be empty. Yeah, half of them don't even have resources allocated to them. Empty, empty, perfect. Back to Nina. We're going to detach these. And uh, reattach them here so that we can dispose of them cleanly when the time comes. It will be a good long while before we can get rid of this uh, resupply pod. It is still mostly full. This crew has enough uh, supplies to stay on station for about the next decade. I don't plan on doing that to them, but, um, you know, it, it, it's an option. Also, uh, when we start having six crew flights out here, they will have the duration to stay for a full window without resupply, which is exactly what we want. So... Jumping back into our sped up footage, uh, Rockstar Engineer Nina, the savior of our Mars mission, will uh, detach the solar panel, making very sure to retract it because we don't need any more busted solar panels. With those four satellite tanks attached to the uh, resupply mod, we, we will dispose of them uh, of our own accord later. Of course, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a good long while before that thing is cleaned up and uh, empty. So we've got our first solar panel attached to um, basically the, the hub as our primary life support storage tank. Uh, we will jump down out here to this supply pod and scavenge a solar panel from it. Um, I don't need to fold that one up because I don't plan on taking it with us. So we'll make the uh, very precarious step-by-step -step jump of uh, detaching and then reattaching someplace different. Hopefully without drifting too far off into space, moving it uh, incrementally uh, does help us a whole lot. Uh, in that it doesn't go floating off into space, drifting away where we can't find it. And uh, one more step, we'll just get her on this ladder here, grab, and then attach the solar panel where we actually want it. At some point, we're probably going to have to rotate the station to optimize these solar panels, but uh, right now is not that time. We're just trying to get things established and keep the equipment we want to keep and get rid of the equipment we don't. We'll retract this panel. It was opposite the one that we uh, just removed so that at least the, I don't know, the <laughs> resupply pod will be symmetrical in some sense. I had planned to see if I could just drift and uh, keep this uh, ready to attach when we got close enough, but my angle was bad and we are drifting further away from the station, not closer to it. So we'll just run back and go ahead and do this the old-fashioned way, moving it a uh, bit by bit, but I'm convinced it'll work. See, that should be well out of range for that kind of jump, but um, I guess we found a nice little loophole we can exploit. So we'll bounce off this ladder, give ourselves a push, grab the solar panel, yeah and miss. 
this other solar panel, thankfully. But I, I had hoped to drift a lot further down. But, you know, the camera angle just never quite wants to center where you want it to. Oh, well. Uh, so, as a quick first step, we're going to remove this tiny solar panel and place it someplace else. We can still probably use the little thing. It just doesn't do us a whole lot of good. And um, with the space station aligned properly, having a much bigger panel here will work. Of course, we can't mount it where the old one was because they don't surface attach to each other. Oh, well. It's on there. It's not the same size as the other one to begin with. I don't think it matters. I thought there would be some science to collect uh, down there between the solar particle collectors and the camera roll, but there is not. And that completes her EVA for this mission. I'll do some research transfer off camera, but uh, in the meantime, let's go jump back out to the moon. Now, we did our orbital insertion. We got rid of our orbital insertion pod when we were making descent. Uh, onto Rosalina Memorial Station. We are now pretty well lined up. That was, I don't know, the boring bits that you've seen 30 or 40 times by now. So we're just trying to uh, zero out some of our alerts of velocity now that the station is basically directly below us and uh, get our retrograde vector right on that targeting indicator because that's probably the best way to go about doing this. Uh, other than using MechJeb's automated systems to do it for us. So just uh, pulsing of those engines to uh, control our descent and hopefully keep that descent vector right where we need it, or at least push it so that when we're over it, it will be right where we need it. It's, uh, I don't know, it's weird to try to explain when you haven't slept very well, but uh, it becomes pretty apparent that I have not slept very well as we try to polish off this landing does take uh, quite a bit longer than I thought, and I really, really hoped that we'd be bringing down a whole lot more fuel in this. And those reticles really throw off my distance perception. So, uh, it's just all of a sudden, there we were, right on top of the base. And I think this thing definitely does need a thruster upgrade. And if we cannot land on the HAB or the Mr. Science, that'd be great. So we'll abort landing there. Try to put it on this side of the fuel tank just overdoing it ever so slightly, but we do get a touchdown. Yeah, not the gentlest, but it is a touchdown. Kill the RCS, kill the stability control, and now it's time to get our resident engineer out here to uh, connect these pipes and hopefully transfer over these resources that the station does quite so desperately need. I mean, not Desperately, desperately, but, you know, they're probably a welcome sight, just to make sure you're not going to run out of air on the surface of the moon and have to abort. So, uh, Laura is going to a, uh, attach a pipe fitting to our, uh, you know, our overstock, our fuel tank, our resupply hub, and walk it out here to the resupply pod out of range. It is literally just meters out of range. We'll try to move the other docking hub here, but it is, yeah. <laughs> you can see how the, the pipe goes red. We will uh, try to push this thing, but uh, even under the moon's very light gravity, and trying to push it uphill, it uh, it's not doing her any, any favors, any favors at all. Which is really unfortunate that it goes red like just a, a meter out of where it should be. So we will uh, load up our disposal unit, our lunar utility truck, and uh, hope that it has enough torque on these wheels to pull this thing uphill a little bit or push it, nudge it. Certainly won't be able to pick it up, but it will be able to connect to it with a magnet. And that will certainly do some kind of good. We have Laura standing at the exact extent of the range of her pipe for resource transfer. So we'll get a angle in the magnet, make sure it's turned on. We've got a solid latch and nothing. Ah, we can pull it down the hill almost easily, but we can't push it up the hill, which is a little distressing because <laughs> uh, I guess this 
heavy utility vehicle is just not quite heavy enough. I guess uh, whoever has this under remote control being very careful not to run over uh, Engineer Laura Douglas. That's such skill there, like within inches. Oh, uh, yeah, we got to rotate the arm this way. We get a lock with the magnet and nothing. Just not enough oomph in these wheels to drag this thing up the hill. I was thinking maybe we could uh, rock it or tip it somehow. But uh, all we're really doing is uh, moving around our utility rover and pushing it further down the hill. <laughs> oh, such fun. Very carefully driving around Laura in an attempt to maybe try to slam it up the hill a little bit or maybe tip it something. Because uh, we really do need this thing just a little bit closer. But uh, again, I was running on about two hours of sleep. And that did not work. It had stopped us dead in our tracks. And again, all we can really do is move this thing down the hill. Even trying to uh, shimmy it or push it with the hydraulic doesn't really work. Bummer. And now here we are sliding even further down the hill because reasons. So <laughs> we are even further than when we started. I thought that maybe if we could just spin it around and, you know, kind of work it in an S turn, maybe we could get some kind of motion here, but it's it is just too dang heavy for a utility uh, rover disposal unit to do any good. So uh, I think we have about one whole option here, and it's the one that I like the absolute least. And of course, the uh, brakes are deciding that now is the time that they don't want to actually work. We do get them locked, of course, but we will move Laura well within the range of that uh, connection pipe. Make sure the fuels are unlocked. Make sure our RCS is going and fire up the engines and try to actually pilot this thing in much closer. Uh, it's just, we don't want to burn too much fuel, so we don't want to get too much altitude. We also don't want to land on a bunch of stuff, but we need to be, like, within 25 meters. And that just put us on the other side of the disposal unit, still 35 meters away, 10 meters shy of our goal. So we'll... Get a bearing, see which RCS control we need to actuate on, and then promptly hit the wrong one. Of course we will. But uh, taking off from that hill does pose some very interesting uh, light pattern challenges in that it instantly kicks you the wrong way. But we're coming in a little closer, so we'll switch back to real-timey footage uh, with all of its lack of frame rate goodness. And hopefully we can land within 25 meters, Laura being the beacon. We'll just nail it. I mean, nail landing on top of Engineer Laura Douglas. What are those helmets made out of? Because holy crap, they're awesome. Uh, not my proudest moment. Not the greatest landing. But we are within range of the pipe fitting. Thankfully, we'll just uh, move it to the other side of this pylon. Reattach it. Yeah, you can tell the game is running quite sluggishly. Link, solid. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Now we can actually replenish our stores and uh, make sure this crew can stay on station for quite a while longer. We actually brought a little more than we needed. Um, the resupply pod will not be fully emptied after transferring everything around, but uh, that's fine. We'll just leave it there for a little while and we'll get back to it eventually. That's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you on the next one. So until then, see you later.